Happy Tuesday to you. Um, I am so glad that we just had a few days to be able to spend some time together. And uh, today I'd like to be able to just continue the conversation that we've had in Luke chapter 8. Um, just kind of a recap of what we talked about um, during the weekend service on Saturday and Sunday. Um, today I'd like to just talk very, very briefly about um, the, the demon-possessed man when he was changed, when he was changed. Um, so if you weren't able to catch the message, I'd love for you to go back and check that out um, and, and get an idea of what was talked about with Jesus really being uh, the change, change agent that went before us, being fully human. He gave us an example of how we can be in times of fear and anxiety. And we're certainly in the midst of uh, days full of the potential of anxiety. Uh, just turn on the news. Look at any social media post uh, on any of the social media channels. There are lots of reasons and lots of ways that we're experiencing fear these days. So in Luke chapter 8, uh, at the very end, and I'll just give you a quick rundown, just in case you weren't able to catch the message. Uh, Jesus and the disciples decided that they were going to sail across uh, Sea of Galilee and uh, when they set foot on the other side uh, there was a demon possessed man that came running out of the hills and screaming at them and so long story short Jesus asked his name he said I am Legion um, because there were many uh, just evil spirits within him uh, to give you some context, like I gave in the message, uh, Roman legion consisted of about 6,000 soldiers. So think about that. That's a lot of uh, a lot of voices going on inside of one body, one head. Uh, I could see why he was living out in the hills. And so Jesus, just with a few words and with a few confident um, action steps, he cast those demons out into a, a herd of pigs, and the pigs went careening off into the lake, and they all drowned. Now, one thing that a lot of times we overlook is right at the very end of that chapter. And uh, the man, in his right mind, seated and said as the townspeople came out, he was speaking plainly, clearly. Uh, clearly the town had never seen this man uh, in this state. And it made them afraid at the power of this one, this Jesus who came and was able to make this man uh, complete and whole again. They were also afraid of the fact that he sent the demons into the, the pigs, uh, this herd which was part of their livelihood, and they're probably a little bit angry about that, uh, the fact that their livelihood was now destroyed. And Jesus may have actually done that, some scholars say, it, to teach them a lesson about what they relied upon. And um, so at the end, it says right here in chapter 8 in Luke, starting with verse 38, it says, the man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, to go with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. When I say we overlook that, I think many times we uh, forget about the fact that once God does something great in our life, once we are called, once uh, we have salvation within us, uh, Jesus many times calls us to action as well. And uh, I think that we can become overwhelmed with the things of our life, uh, the day-to-day -day activities, the operations of work and home and family. And sometimes we need to recalibrate a little bit. Sometimes we need to go back to Jesus and say, what is my call again? What have you asked me to do? And many times what we believe our call is, is not the call that Jesus has for us. Uh, in the case of this, this man, he wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to spend the rest of his days with Jesus, this one who had saved, saved him from this legion of evil spirits. But yet Jesus had a different task for him, and he wanted him to go back to this town, the town from which these people came out and were afraid of God and were afraid of Jesus, and he wanted him to go back to this town to speak of what had happened to him, to be a witness, to have a testimony for the good things that God had done for him. Perhaps today, uh, you need to recalibrate and ask Jesus what it is that he's called you to do. It may not be a bad thing. And it also may not be what you expect. 
So today I would just call you, I would encourage you to spend some time asking God what it is that he wants for you to do. What is your call? What is your purpose? And then approach that purpose without fear, without anxiety, giving it all to him. Let me pray a blessing over you today. Father God, we are grateful today that you've given us the opportunity to just spend this time, these few minutes with you. And I ask that you would continue to lead and guide our steps as we, um, we submit our hearts to your will. Lord, today I ask that you would also uh, allow us to be able to um, just have confidence that you have a plan and a purpose for us. And Lord, as we ask, I ask that you would be faithful to share it with us. We thank you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Tuesday. We'll see you soon.